Hi, this is Ariane from La Fille de la Mer, handmade soap shop in the Magdalene Islands, Quebec, Canada. Today I'm going to be making a melt and pour video. I'm going to make my uh, sea bar uh, glycerin based soap. And um, I'm making this video because while I was in Indianapolis a couple months ago, I did a workshop on layering uh, melt and pour soap. And at the end of my workshop, I got people asking me about using additives and how to suspend. Uh, botanicals in melt and pour and what you could and couldn't add to melt and pour and as it so happens I do make a lot of melt and pour and I do use lots of additives to my soap so let me show you first what I use to make my soaps so this is the this is the melt and pour soap base that I use this one is the clear I also have a white base both from the same supplier so I have my melting tanks right here and I have my melt and pour already melted in there. I started it this morning and it's ready now at a, about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's pretty easy to work with. And in this soap, I'm going to color it blue with some lab colors. I'm going to be adding some uh, organic and virgin coconut oil. I'm also going to use kelp, salt, and fragrance in there. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to be making two loaves um, of this soap and I'm going to aim to fill my stock pot with 8 kilos of melt and pour and I really like these, they are stainless steel stock pot from Ikea and they have measurements inside so it's really easy for me to know when I'm about uh, at the right amount that I need. When I first opened the valve on my melter this part is not heated, so I need to usually just give it a small poke. Oops, there we go. And I previously placed my stock pot on a scale and teared it, so I will be able to measure exactly 8 kilos, or 8,000 grams. I really like using a white spoon um, while stirring my melt and pour because it allows me to see the color that I'm going to color my soap better because the bottom is stainless steel so of course that's gonna not going to show the true color of the soap. Um, because I'm in Canada and we have very strict um, labeling and health regulation rules, I need to measure all my ingredients. So I'm going to start by doing the blue. And I'm adding one teaspoon for my two loaves. And one teaspoon is roughly five grams because this is diluted lab color. It's been diluted in uh, distilled water. And this usually gives me exactly the right blue that I'm looking for. And you can see that on my spoon, you actually see the color of the soap. It's a little lighter than what you see in the stock pot. Also, I use a quarter teaspoon oops, of mica just to give it a little shimmer <clears throat> and uh, mica usually blends it. it, it bubbles up at the top a little but it usually after a couple minutes of stirring and while stirring the other ingredients usually it'll just get mixed in there and rubbing alcohol also helps to to pop the bubbles and mix everything in and you can kind of see the shimmer it gives to the soap. Now, um, when adding oils, whether it be a hard oil like coconut oil or the liquid vegetable oil like almond oil or castor, olive, whatever, um, I never go over 1%. So you can use a calculator and do the math. So I have 8,000 grams of melt and pour in here. So that's the maximum that I should use in here would be 80 grams. So I'm going to weigh my 1% right on the scale right here. The reason why I don't use over 1% is if you do, you can, but you will greatly reduce the lather of your soap. <clears throat> so in this soap, I'm using uh, orga organic virgin coconut oil, but you could use any oil. It can be shea butter, 
cocoa butter even. And uh, even in clear soap, cocoa butter, when it's used under 1%, it usually leaves the soap clear. Alright, so just gonna add it here and it'll it'll melt with the heat of the melt and pour. See right now it's at a hundred and around 140 Fahrenheit and I want my temperature to get a little lower than this before I pour it in the molds anyways. So I'm gonna keep on adding my other ingredients. Uh, I'm using salt and kelp in this recipe and as for um, kelp, you, you could go uh, ahead and add up to 1% kelp but in this soap I don't want it to be all green and kelp color looking. I just want the kelp to like disperse in the soap and give it an interesting look. <clears throat> so I will usually... Oops, where's my little measuring cup? So usually I use about one gram, which is not a lot, <laughs> but you'll see that it'll it'll um, it'll be enough to just give some interest to the soap. You can kind of well, maybe you can. I'll I'll try to get a closer look, but you can see the kelp when you put the spoon into the melting pour. Now I'm going to go ahead and measure my salt. So same thing for salt, uh, you can go all the way up to 1%, but I usually uh, like to stay a little lower than this. This salt is local from the Magdalene Island, just as the kelp, and I'm going to use 0.5%, so that's 40 grams because if you add too much then it's it doesn't give a nice effect in the soap. That's just for melt and pour. Other other recipes like for cold process you can put much more salt in the soap but this is not my goal here. Alright so okay I got 25 grams that I will put right now and add another 15 My stick blender. So you see how the salt kind of stays lumpy. I'm just gonna place it right under my mixer, pop a couple bubbles out of there and there we go. So any mica that wasn't dispersed or any kelp that was still clogging together will be dispersed very well in the soap. time for fragrance and essential oils or whatever you'd want to add to this soap. In this soap I'm going to use a fragrance called Ocean Breeze that I really like and also a little bit of lime essential oil 0.3% because that's the maximum usage rates in Canada and I'm also going to use a lime a Always remember that when you use fragrances and essential oils and melt and pour they are also oil-based products, so the more you add, the less bubble, especially with clear mountain pour, the less bubbles you'll, you will get. Um, so here I went ahead and added my blend. There's 1% total in here. So there's a part that is the ocean breeze, part lime, and part along a line. The salt and the kelp are kind of suspended in the base. I could go ahead and pour my soap right now in the molds, but if I do, um, the salt and the kelp will sink to the bottom of my mold and it won't give a nice and pretty effect. This soap is not totally ready to be poured, 
Uh, I just wanted to show you that it's at 120 Fahrenheit, which is about 49, 50 Celsius, and it's still stirrable, so you can't pour it until it's thick enough to hold suspended the additives that are in it. I went ahead and used my stick blender to make sure the salt and everything was dispersed and you can kind of tell now it's like it's a jelly like consistency like when you make uh, apple jelly or something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it before it sets up into my mold it's kind of gooey <laughs> I don't know how to best describe it and I know a video is not the best way to show I'm gonna pour from up high because I want some bubbles in this soap. It's called sea bar, and usually when you walk by the sea, there's foam. Oops, on the on the seaside, and as I would normally pop the bubbles on top of my soaps, in this case I don't. All right, look, look at my jar. See how jelly-like it is? Well, that's that's a little too much, but that's what it was like just before I poured it a little thinner. So now I'm going to let this set until tomorrow and I'll be back to cut it and show you the results. The bars are fully hardened, so now it's time to remove them from the mold. So it's very easy, I just remove, oops, remove the bungee cords. Yeah, and then I snap off the ends. Um, when it's a little bit more humid outside, uh, sometimes the stainless doesn't want to release, so I just take a little knife and give it a little help just by cutting at the end here, and then this breaks the suction and helps me open up the mold. And it's foggy outside today, so it's very humid, and you can actually feel it on the mountain pour. So, as soon as these are unmolded, I'm going to wrap them in saran wrap so that they don't get all moist all over. There we go. Now I'm going to place my knife right on there to break the suction from underneath and lift it up. Ta-da! Nice soap. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the side. Maybe the second one. Now I'm just going to trim the ends like this. gonna place a ruler onto my loof and with my knife I'm gonna mark a line at 12 inch because this is the middle and these are quite long to carry on their own so I'm gonna use my super cheese knife <laughs> to the shop so they can be cut and labeled. 